Hello students, in today's video we are going to study flame emission spectroscopy. So let's start with introduction and theory. It is very difficult to determine quantitatively alkali and alkaline earth metals by wet chemical method. So emission spectroscopy is an evident instrumental approach for the determination of these elements. Practically by wet chemical methods, alkali and alkaline earth metals are not easy to determine quantitatively. So this technique emission spectroscopy is used for this purpose. This technique deals with examination of energy emitted from a substance when suitably excited. Okay, there is an emission of some light and in this technique we measure the intensity of light and from that we can determine the concentration of species present in the solution. So in this technique we deal with examination of energy emitted from a substance when suitably excited. We know that alkali and alkaline earth metals can be detected by the name test. All alkali and alkaline met, uh, earth metals ion give characteristics colors in Bunsen flame. For example, we know that the sodium, when sodium is burned in the flame, it shows a characteristic yellow light. Okay, and the brightness or the intensity of the flame color varies with the amount of sodium or other metal introduced. So, from the intensity of light, we can determine the concentration of sodium. So, emission of such particular radiation by sodium or other metal and the correlation of the emission intensity with the concentration of the element forms the basis of flame emission spectroscopy. So, in flame emission spectroscopy, we study what the correlation between the emission intensity with the concentration of the element. Okay, it is the introduction of flame emission spectroscopy. In this technique, the sample which is dissolved in water or in organic solvent is introduced into the flame. The name suggests what here flame is used. Okay, and in this flame, the sample solution is inserted. Generally, solid sample first dissolved in proper solvent, then that uh, that solvent is introduced into the flame by using atomizer under certain specific control condition. Then after that, the sample solution get vaporized into the flame. Okay, then dissociation of solid particles is takes place to form neutral atoms or free radicals and then they get excited and after that radiation from the flame enters the dispersing device in order to isolate the desired region of the spectrum. The intensity of isolated radiation can be measured by photo tube and some type of meter and electronic amplifier. It is a process which is involved in flame emission spectroscopy. Firstly, the sample solution is introduced into the flame. Then after that, some radiations are coming out through the flame and these radiations are falls on the dispersing device. Okay. Then it isolates this radiation. Then this radiation can be measured by a photo tube and some type of meter and electronic amplifier. Hence, lastly, the signal intensity is measured. Then, a calibration curve of emission intensity as a function of concentration is prepared. Okay, then after that by using the data which is measured by using flame photometer, we can draw a calibration curve of emission intensity as a function of concentration. And by using this calibration curve, it is possible to correlate intensity of a given spectral line of the unknown with the amount of element present that emits the particular radiation. So by using calibration curve and the intensity of unknown solution, we can determine its concentration. Okay, it is a calibration curve method. Atomization of solution, when sample solution is uh, aspirated into the flame, after that 
atomization is taking place and that process allows the sample throughout the body of the flame okay there is a distribution of sample throughout the body of the cell and the whole sample or portion of it is introduced into the flame so this technique is mainly used in hospitals to measure the levels of sodium as well as potassium ions present in body fluids and tissue it is the application of flame emission spectroscopy this technique is used in hospitals to measure the level of sodium or potassium ions present in the body fluids like uh, blood urine and other body fluids etc principle in this method we know that sample solution is aspirated into the flame then this sample solution get evaporated and after that it get atomized okay when the atoms are excited light is emitted for this excitation high temperature is required the temperature must be high enough the liquid components of the sample entering the flame in the form of mist it vaporizes the residual solid particles into the gaseous state as completely as possible and after that dissociate the molecule to form free neutral atoms or radicals okay so for this total process the temperature must be high okay only at higher temperature the vaporization and dissociation of solution takes place lastly there is a formation of free neutral atoms or radicals and then then these neutral atoms or radicals are get excited and after that they emit the light radiation and when these light radiations are falls on the surface of detector detector measure its intensity then that signal is get amplified and recorded to the process okay as with atoms the frequency is radiated by molecules and radicals are calculated by using this relation okay we know that delta e is equal to h nu here delta e is what e2 minus e1 e2 is the energy of higher level higher energy level e1 is the energy of ground state energy level okay where well, h is the planck's constant we know that the relationship between frequency and wavelength u is equal to c by lambda if we use this value in this equation we get e2 minus c1 is equal to hc upon lambda okay so c is the velo uh, velocity of light lambda is the wavelength of radiations okay it is the principle of flame emission spectroscopy by using this formula okay we can determine the frequency is radiated by the molecules the next point is the various steps that are involved in the fes okay look at here first step is what spraying a solution of the sample in a hot flame it is the first step sample solution is sprayed into the flame and after that the sample solution get vaporized there is a formation of mist then vaporization of the mist to form residual solid particles okay after that the dissociation of the residue is takes place and there is a formation of neutral atoms then these neutral atoms are set into ground state and excited state and lastly the number of atoms which are present in excited state emit some radiations when they are coming to ground state and there is a measurement of wavelength and intensity of emitted radiations these are the steps which are involved in fes first is the spraying the solution into the flame then formation of mist after that vaporization okay to form solid particles then that get dissociate to form neutral atoms after that these uh, some of the neutral atoms absorbs the heat energy from the flame and get excited so next step is to set the atom in excited state and ground state the atoms which are present in excited state when they come to the ground state they emit some radiation and lastly there is a measurement of wavelength and intensity of emitted radiations okay the next point here 
the number of atoms which are present in excited state is measured by using some mathematical equation it is called as boltzmann equation okay equation is what n star upon n is equal to a into e raised to minus e upon kt it is the boltzmann equation where n star it is the number of atoms which are present in excited state and n it is the number of atoms which are present in ground state so by using this formula we can measure the number of atoms which are present in excited state generally in flame emission spectroscopy we are interested in what the number of atoms which are present in excited state only these atoms which are present in excited they emits radiations and gives emission spectra and by using detector we can measure the intensity and wavelength of this emitted radiation so in this technique we are interested only in number of atoms which are present in excited state and these are measured by using uh, this equation boltzmann equation n star upon n is equal to a into e raised to minus e upon kt where n star is what number of atoms present in excited state n it is the number of atoms which are remaining in ground state a it is the constant for a particular element okay ea it is a difference in energies of two levels that is excited higher energy level and ground state one level okay k it is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature of flame okay it is a very important equation this equation is asked for one mark in examination boltzmann equation okay it is useful for what to measure the number of atoms present in excited state the above equation shows what it the number of atoms which are present in uh, excited state it is directly proportional to the temperature okay so if temperature of the flame is high then the n star where the value of n star is also high so the above equation shows that the number of excited state of atoms are dependent upon the uh, temperature of the flame at higher temperature of the flame the number of excited atoms are more in number and high high temperature are necessary for elements which are not easily excited so the flame temperature must be high to increase the value of n star and also to increase the excitation of elements which are not easily excited next one advantages of fes it is generally more accurate since atomization into a flame is more reproducible it is rather a faster technique the detection of alkali metals and many times for alkali nut metal is quite good as the number of lines are limited in the spectral spectra it is easier to resolve and identify individual member even in the presence of each other so it is useful for the separation of one or more number of metal ions it is easy to carry out and requires not highly trained staff the preparation of standard solution is much easier than the other spectroscopy methods okay these are the advantages of fes okay, it is accurate method faster technique it is useful for detection of alkali and alkaline earth metals okay as the number of lines are emitted it is useful for it is easy to resolve and identify individual member in the presence of each other it is easy to carry out so it does not require highly trained staff the preparation of standard solution is much easier as compared to other spectroscopy techniques so these are the advantages of fes then next point is the disadvantages here limited number of elements can be directly determined in the conventional flames okay only limited number of elements are determined by using conventional flames the concentration of elements which are not determined in the conventional flame must be high okay the elements which are not determined by using conventional flames okay the concentration of such element is must be high the solid substances cannot be used directly okay there is one condition that means the solution must be prepared for the analysis 
okay then instead of sharp lines diffuse bands of compounds such as calcium oxide calcium hydroxide and copper hydroxide often appear okay in in case of this compound calcium oxide calcium hydroxide and calcium sorry copper hydroxide diffuse bands are observed and these can interfere in spectral separation so these are the disadvantages of fes okay limited number of uh, elements can be determined by using conventional flame the elements which cannot be determined by using conventional flame this concentration must be high solid substances cannot be used directly okay and instead of sharp line diffuse bands are observed in cases of some compounds okay and so these diffuse bands can interfere in spectral separation these are the disadvantages of fes